Hello, hello, grade 11s. I am going to look at a mock exam based on paper two, analytical geometry. Now, if you've already listened to Mr. Halley's video on exam prep for paper one, you would have seen that he suggested you write certain formulas on the front of your page when you first get your exam. Now you can do the exact same thing with paper two. You know paper two has analytical geometry in it. And so the first thing you do when you get your paper, you can start writing down your formulas since you know that you're not going to be getting a formula sheet in grade 11, only in grade 12. And as much as that might seem like a disadvantage this year, it will be an advantage to you next year in grade 12 because the better you know the formulas, the less time you have to spend going and looking them up. So if you write them on the front, I would start with my distance formula. And I'm going to write in pen because pencil doesn't show up that well. So AB is equal to X1 minus X2. And some of you might put an A and a B there since we're talking about line AB. In fact, let's change that to an A and a B plus YA minus YB all being squared, square rooted. Then you have your midpoint formula, which is x of a plus x of b. And because we want the midway of that, we're taking the average of those two x values and the same with our y values, y of a plus y of b. And we want the average of those two coordinates. And then your gradient formula, hopefully you already know your gradient formula off the top of your head. So I'm not going to write down that formula. But you might want to write down this version of it for your line. y minus y1 is equal to the gradient times by x minus x1. Or if you prefer y is equal to mx plus c, but hopefully that formula you also know off of the top of your head. And then the final formula is for your angle of inclination, which is tan theta is equal to your gradient. So you can write this down at the beginning of your exam, or when you get to a question that you can see is using analytical geometry, you can start by writing down your formulas just to get your head back into gear for analytical geometry. Right, let's look at our first question. So very important in any question, the most important part is to read the question and understand what it's talking about. So in the following diagram, we have C, which has got a K and a 5, point A and point F. Now, hopefully you're already noticing that both coordinates C and F have a K variable in them, which means they have the same value for their X value. And then it says, are the vertices of triangle CAF, just to make sure that you know that those join to create a triangle. Point B, negative 1, negative 2, is the midpoint of AF. So that is telling you two things. Firstly, that point B is on the line AF. And secondly, that it is in between. So just to make sure that I don't forget, I might use my highlighter to highlight those points showing me that B is in the midpoint that I don't forget. Just a side note here, it's good to get your exam paper all colorful and put on colors to help you to remember things as you are going through your questions. Right, that was the first point. B is the midpoint of AF, and C is parallel to the y-axis, y, which explains to us why that is K. And just for the added emphasis, so that we don't forget that, 
you can put little arrows on there to help you to remember. And finally, the inclination of AF is theta. And there we have our final instruction. So now we can go to our first question. So let's move that there so that we can see the question. 1.1. 1 .1. Determine the values of K and P. So K and P, unfortunately C we can't link to any other points on the Cartesian plane other than F, which is also missing K. So we've got to link F to B or A, and we've been told that that's a midpoint. So somehow you're going to use your midpoint to work out the values of K and P. Now I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I'm going to give you tips on each of the questions. Second question, the gradient of AF. So we want this gradient here. Now, if you've worked out F, then it's straightforward on how to calculate that. But if you have struggled to work out F, look to see if there's another point on that line that you can use to work out the gradient. And as you can see, we've got a point B, so we can use point B to work out that gradient instead. Then 1.1.3, 1 .1 the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AF. So let's bisect these words. Perpendicular, we know means 90 degrees. Bisector means cut in half. So we already know where halfway of A and F is. So we've got a point for our line, first of all. And then we know that that line's going to be at a 90 degree. So if you really need to visualize it, you can draw in a line that kind of looks 90 degrees there. Now, hopefully you're already thinking, right, it's 90 degrees to AF. We calculated AF over here, so we can use that gradient to work out our gradient of this line. And our bisector is our point B. So we've got a point on our line, and we can use that to work out the equation of the line. Right, moving on to 1.2. Determine whether triangle CAF is equilateral, isosceles, or scalene, show or working. So my first thought is, what properties of my triangle do these describe? And it's talking about the side lengths, which means that we're going to use our distance formula. And we're going to have to work out the length of each of the lines and see what their relationship is to decide what type of triangle this is. And don't forget to give your conclusion. 1.3, determine the value of theta and hence of AFC, angle AFC. So theta, we were told earlier, is the angle of inclination. So I know I'm going to use my tan Theta is equal to my gradient, but be very careful because theta here is like a variable. This theta here, I need to decide whether it represents that depending on the gradient of my line there. The second part, hence, means that I need to use that to work out the second part. And this is a complex problem, so I'm going to let you give it a try on your own before I give you any hints there. 1.4. Explain why the perpendicular bisector of AF cannot pass through C. Now I'm going to move this back over here so you can see the full triangle. We know this is our perpendicular bisector. We worked out the equation earlier. And if we had to extend it according to what they're saying, that line will not go through that point C. Now, drawing in that line and seeing if it goes through there, through point C is not a viable option. You're going to have to tell us something about the triangle or those points as to why it will not pass through there. So thinking about our triangle, when will a point from the middle of the base go to the highest point. Now that is a very special property of an isosceles triangle. 
the height of an isosceles triangle, so 90 degrees to the top of the triangle, will cut the base in half. So you will have to use something from 1.2 to help you make that decision. It's almost like a hint connection over there. Our last question, 1.5. If D is a point on CF, such that BD is parallel to AC, determine the value of Y. So let's come back up to our triangle over here. It helps to be able to visualize what we are talking about. So point D is somewhere on this line where this will be parallel to that. And if you need to kind of cheat it and make it, draw it in okay so that they are parallel so we know this line is parallel to that and point d is connected to point b and i'm going to stop there because this is a nice problem solving question for you to figure out on your own also note for question 1.5 it's only worth two marks which means you shouldn't be doing a whole lot of work to determine the coordinates of point D. And that is the end of question one. Let's move on to question two. Here we have question two. Once again, we're going to start with reading the instructions. In the diagram below, A is this point, B is this point, and C, and C we don't have the coordinates for, are the vertices of a triangle. And they tell us nothing special about that triangle. E is a point on AC such that BE is perpendicular to AC. Now that perpendicular can become very important when we're looking at gradients. So I would highlight that little 90 degree sign there so that I don't forget it when I'm busy working because often this information gets mixed up in all the other stuff. Now let's carry on. The point D, negative 8, negative 4, lies on BE and you know, I'll make a mental note there might be something to do with collinear over here because we have points being specified lying on the same line and then lastly they tell us the equation of line bc 4y minus 5x minus 30 is equal to zero and maybe do something so that that also stands out to you so you don't forget about it in the middle of your exam right let's move this up so that we can see our triangle and our questions. 2.1, calculate the gradient of BD. That's pretty straightforward, so I'm not gonna give you any hints there. 2.2, hence write down the gradient of AC. Now, hence is a little clue word. It's saying, look at what you did before and work out the gradient of that line. So if we look at line AC, we only have point A. We don't know what point E is, and we don't know what point C is. So we're going to have to work out the gradient using another method. And so how do I connect line AC with line EB? And here we have our 90 degrees. And in this question, we just worked out the gradient of BD which is the gradient of that whole line. So we're going to be working with perpendicular gradients, where we know that the gradient of the one line times by the gradient of the second line will give me negative one. 2.3, determine the equation of AC in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Now, they have told us very specifically what form our answer should be. So when you get to our answer, make sure that you solve for y is equal to. And we're looking at AC. 
Now we've just worked out the gradient of that line. So we have the gradient and we have a point. So very much, as you can see, two marks, straightforward question to work out the gradient. 2.4. The point G lies on the line AB. Calculate the value of P. Now they don't tell us anything else about where P is on that line. So I can put a dot there and put a G. So we know then these three points are collinear. And so I'm going to use the concept of collinear to work out the p-value in point G. And what do we know about points that are collinear? Yes, their shared gradients are the same. So the gradient of BA will be equal to the gradient of BG, which is equal to the gradient of AG. And notice each time we are sharing a point between these three gradients. Our final question, 2.5, calculate the coordinates of C. And C is all the way up here. Now, we often get stuck on the idea that point C is inside our triangle, but we don't know anything special about this triangle. So remember I told you to keep track of this equation. Now this equation is for this line. Notice in 2.3, they asked us to work out the equation for AC. So now we've got the equation for two lines. These two lines are not only sides of our triangle, they are two lines that intersect at point C. And so your hint for C is simultaneous equations. I hope you found that helpful. Now it is your turn to go and work out the answers to these two questions. And then you will find a memo in the grade 11 memo folder. And there will be a follow-up video on question one and question two. Thank you for your time, grade 11s.